What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here, and today we're gonna take a look at some entry-level espresso machines. So what I have here is a DeLonghi Dedica, I have the Smeg Espresso Machine, and the Solus Barista Perfetta. Until now, the cheapest espresso machine, or the semi-automatic espresso machine that I'd covered, was the Breville Bambino and Bambino Plus. So I figured it was time to kind of branch out and see all these other options that are out there. Of course, I see a lot about the DeLonghi Dedica. It is a very entry-level espresso machine. It's something a lot of people start off with, maybe not knowing what they need to get when they enter the espresso realm, and they end up getting one of these because it has a very attractive price tag. Then you, of course, you have the Smeg, which is a, a, a kitchen appliance company that is kind of taken the world by storm with their aesthetics. A lot of people see them as kind of a status symbol. It's a very beautiful uh, a piece of art that sits in a lot of people's kitchens, whether it's their refrigerator, their toaster, or an espresso machine. So I grabbed one of these. And then on the end, I got the Barista Perfetta Plus from Solus. This one sits closer to about 350 US dollars. Now, the reason I decided to include this one is it is intentionally a competitor of the Breville Bambino. And so I wanted to see how it fared since I've already covered in two videos the two different Breville Bambinos. So today we're gonna take a look at all three of these and do kind of a first impressions with the accessories out of the box. My plan is then in maybe a month or so, I modify each of these in order to greatly improve their capabilities with different accessories or like with a naked port filter maybe with modifying them with the dimmer modification that I've done in the past and looking at different ways of improving these machines so that if you have one of these, you can first learn how to make good coffee in this video, and then if you want to further your education or your capabilities with your machine without having to buy a new machine, that second video will come through to help you on improving your coffee. Let's get going. First up, we have the DeLonghi Dedica. So just right out of the box, what it all comes with is a portafilter, this really high quality uh, scoop tamp, two in one. It's like the spork of the coffee world. You get a little bit of descaling solution, bada bing bada boom, and you have a couple of, you know, variations on baskets. So let's go ahead and take a look at what these are. So first off, we look at this portafilter. It's got that big old daddy body right there. We're gonna pull this out. Inside you got loads of plastic. I'm sure there's a way to remove that. We're not gonna do that in this video again because, well, we're gonna do everything just out stock out of box. What your experience will be if you're someone that just gets one of these machines and I'm just gonna try to make really nice coffee with it. They have kind of like the double walled baskets. So what it is is on the inside, you have essentially these little guys. This is uh, like a the screen, it, or it's the bottom of the basket, but it's like a, it's like the screen in your machine is what it kind of looks like. Maybe this was for uh, manufacturing purposes. It's easier to manufacture it like this than to manufacture a double uh, base. Because normally in like what comes with the Bambino as an option of a basket is the pressurized basket where you have the mesh bottom and then underneath you have another metal bottom with a uh, kind of less holes coming out. That way the extraction goes through this and then it pressurizes under this this and goes through this tiny little hole. So it adds an extra layer of pressure to it. So if you have like pre-ground coffee or something, what you're able to do is get a crema-like substance in that final cup. Now it's not exactly crema, it's more like a faux crema, but anyway, I think that's a really odd way of doing it, having a, a, a gasket inside because you're not gonna get close to an even extraction. This obviously is a, pretty much a joke. I mean, topsy-turvy. You're gonna like hold it like a pin in order to tamp. I guess it doesn't really matter again because they're expecting you to use pre-ground coffee with this machine. Yeah, we're not gonna do that. So we got 14 grams in there, and then we're gonna tappy tap tap tap. Come on! There it is, all right. Doesn't really matter because we're using a pressurized basket, but we're still gonna try to do a little something something nice. There we go. Okay. It's coming out a bit quick. That's not the worst thing I've ever seen. All right, all right. We'll go ahead and stop it like right there. It doesn't look terrible, but. All right, so that shot was kind of trash. 
and honestly, I don't think that's a fair representation of this machine. So I'm gonna break already a rule, because we break rules here. I'm a rebel. I picked up a naked portafilter for this machine that'll fit. We're gonna pull another shot with it, just to see what this is actually gonna be able to deliver you if you have it. And you know, you can always add this to your cart when you're checking out, you know, wherever you're buying it. This is easy to grab. Just a simple 51 millimeter naked portafilter. Get over it. Tell me where did you <laughs> learn to? All right, so we've got the coffee in there, packed up, tamped, ready to go, let's hit it. All right, not too shabby, not too shabby. A little slow, a little bit of channeling, but I wasn't able to do any distribution. I just kind of put it in there, tamped with the plastic tamper and said, let's rip it and ride. So there it is. You could do a blooming style shot on the DeLonghi Dedica outside the box. Like, since there's no solenoid valve, there's no suctioning out, so the puck's gonna be wet at the end, okay? But what that means is you could stop your shot early on, let the coffee bloom, then start it again, which is a really cool thing. You can't really do that with, with you know, their stock stuff. But, you know, you put this in and you get real crema and it's not terrible. As the other two options that we're gonna look at today, this has three temperature settings, which is actually kind of nice. You can play with low, medium, and high on the temperature. All right, let's try to steam some milk. All right. In order to make this work for me, is I'm just gonna scoop off some of this foam and get rid of it. And we're gonna transfer back to this pitcher and we're gonna try to pour something. <laughs> And there you have it. You can make milk foam on anything. I see people complaining all the time that they're not able to get good milk foam. Well, you can do it even on a Panarello. Curious how I did this, I just used my, my rules from my original milk steaming video of halfway and a quarter. And then I stretched and submerged and let it whirl till temperature. And then we have nice milk foam. So. There you have it. So if you're someone that uses pre-ground coffee and you just want something simple, or if you're willing to, you know, spend an extra 20 bucks or so to get the single wall basket and a naked portafilter so you can actually take a little bit more control, grind your coffee, watch the extraction, work on your distribution, maybe get a WDT. Well, if you do all of that, this actually does a solid job. At 160 bucks, it's hard to see if there's any rival at that price point when it comes to a semi-automatic machine. If you're wanting to do back-to-back -back, uh, cappuccinos, you're gonna have to, you know, cool the steaming wand. There's some different tips that they give you in the manual. There is no manometer, so you're kind of guessing on the pressure, but in reality, if you're using a naked portafilter, you'll be able to figure that out based off the flow rate of the coffee coming out. There's no solenoid, so you want to be careful pulling the portafilter out, but that will actually allow you to nerd out even more as you get more and more into coffee because it allows you to play with different start and stop type of ideas with your espresso. Next up is the Smeg. Now, this machine reminds me of that, hey, can I copy your homework? Yeah, just make sure you change it a little bit so it's not obvious. This is identical, literally, to the DeLonghi Dedica. Same exact interface, same exact Steam One handle, same exact Steam One, the Panarello One, same exact portafilter, same exact tamper scooper, and it has the same internals. The pump is the same. You can get the DeLonghi for 160 bucks or spend double the amount for the aesthetic in the name of Smeg. That's what you're getting. The portafilter on the Smeg is a little bit more robust. I'm not sure if it's a, maybe a different metal out here or if maybe the handle is just more weighty, but uh, there is that. These are all just the normal pressurized Baskets, they still are no good. You still don't want to use pr these pressurized double wall baskets. Other than that, everything's, I mean, samesies, okay? So we're just gonna use the same dial because it's the same group head. Tell you. Okay, Talkie. cool. Blah, blah, blah. Easy. Blah, blah. Silky like butter. Yo, there we are again. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. There are mods you can do where you take the steam wand off and replace it with the Ranchilio steam wand, which we'll do in the follow-up video, and we'll do some other modifications as well. You can look online and look at any of the DeLonghi Dedica modifications. Tom has a great YouTube channel, I'll put it down below, where he does a lot of DeLonghi videos. You can literally take any of those modifications and apply it to this, and it's gonna work. And 
great. It's a nice washed peaberry Kenya coffee with some milk. Now we have the Mac Daddy of these three machines, the Solus Barista Perfetta Pro. First off, I will say it has the same pump as the other two. So you're not really gaining anything massive from a, from a, from a new pump. But what it does have are much better accessories. It has an actual steam wand, like a proper one, where you can get really nice microphone without having to do my stinking scoop method. And it has a manometer right here, a pressure gauge, where you're able to see where you're at. Now, since these machines don't have solenoids or OPVs, over pressure valves, you're kind of just like hoping that you're hitting the right pressure range based off the way the espresso is flowing out, which isn't the worst thing. It does make you know repeatability a little bit more difficult, but being able to see your pressure is a big advantage over the other two. If you want to spend time modifying a Dedica, you can get a machine that matches this this one does out of the box with less money, but you are gonna have to spend some in order to get up to that price. So really you're looking at about $150 difference between these two at retail, and then you're gonna have to spend the money on the mods for the Dedica, et cetera, et cetera. So let's take a look at what it comes with out of the box. First thing, it comes with a really nice Brita water filter, which is showing you you need to take care of the water in your machine. So it comes with this as well as a water testing strip, so you can program your machine to know essentially how it should work with the water filter, which I think is a really necessary thing that more people should be adding in their box. Now there are places in the other two machines for water filters, but they did not come stock with the machine, at least for me. You have a nice bean scoop. Similar to the others, there's a bean scoop. This is stronger plastic. Uh, it may be the same plastic, just thicker. I'm not quite sure to be honest. And as you notice, there's no tamper on the other end. And that's because it comes with, with its own very heavy duty tamper, which is a really, really nice thing to add with it. The Breville Bambino, for instance, comes with one, but it's a nasty little plastic tamper that is, I do not like it. The little Bambino tamper is 83 grams. This weighs a whopping 365 grams. This one has a 54 millimeter group head. And as you can see, it is the same as that Breville group head. This is a naked uh, Breville portafilter that I've made in collaboration with Art Presso. Let's see if it fits in here to see if the group head is the same exact size. It's just a little bit smaller. So the Breville portafilter might be like a little over 54, whereas this one is a little under, I would say. Other accessories that work with the Breville, like the tampers and things that you find on third-party sites, will work with this, the shot funnels. You also will have more basket options from like IMS and things like that uh, in order to really improve your machine. So you do have that advantage over the 51 millimeter group head of the DeLonghi and the Smeg. You pull the basket out, and what we immediately see is this is not a pressurized basket. This is a single wall basket. There is a single walled, single shot basket. There is a double walled, so they do have pressurized, double shot basket. There is a double walled, single shot basket. And then I imagine this might be for pods or something, but or it could be a single walled, I mean double walled, single shot, or an even smaller single shot. So they give you a Mac Daddy amount of baskets, which is really nice, giving you the option of using freshly ground coffee, pre-ground coffee, or pods. Another big thing this has over the DeLonghi Dedica is that it has a three-way solenoid inside of it, which is gonna give you dry pucks, uh, which is a really nice thing for a lot of people. And, but this means you're gonna have to really make sure you back flush and clean it really well, because that solenoid can get jammed up pretty easily. So they give you this, this back flush disc, which also comes with this cute little guy, which can clean out your steam wand. Having a solenoid is both a positive and a negative. Positive because it does give you a lot drier pucks, but it's a negative in the sense that with the solenoid, right when you hit the button off, it's gonna suck the pressure out of the group and unseat the puck. Now, of course, you can do something like the dimmer modification, which allows you to not actuate the solenoid and still play around with the flow rate going through the puck, giving you the same capabilities. It's good and it's bad, as I said. And you get a milk pitcher as well as a little scrubby brush all right well let's pull a shot with it and uh, see how it all goes now because i already have a funnel for the 54 i'm gonna wdt this i don't care Give a little tippy tap we're gonna use this robust tamper it actually fits the portafilter pretty well it's a little loose the one I made for the Breville's a little tighter, but it's still pretty good. We're gonna plop that in. I could use a little putt screen I have, but we won't go that crazy today. Mm -hmm. 
So what we can see off the bat is since there's no OPV, it's going up to 13 bar, which means I have it ground a little finely. Uh, but I wouldn't really worry about the pressure on here. Pressure largely is a red herring when you're talking about espresso. Some people may be convinced that they're tasting a big difference between 12 and 9 bar, but in the only sensory panel I know about that tested this, there was no difference perceived between 9 and 12 bar. So I, I wouldn't really stress that. You could go coarser and achieve a lower bar of pressure, sure, but um, I, I would recommend doing a side-by-side -side between the 9 and 12. Once you get past 12, you could have a secondary compression, which can increase a lot of channels and, and decrease the homogeneity of extraction. But in reality, essentially, whenever you have that higher pressure, pressure, you're not necessarily introducing more potential channels. I'm going to go a little coarser and we'll, we'll do a little side by side right now, but I, I really wouldn't worry about it. So this one we have pulling at 10 bar, it looks like, just under 10. It's going down now. It's going down with the erosion of the puck, which actually will probably make this coffee taste a little bit better. So we're going to let that go. Whoops. Stop. Okay. Whoopsies there. This may not be a very easy uh, taste to taste because I did that little mess up, but there will likely will be a difference actually because we had the descending pressure on that second one. So, yeah, an expected difference there. This one has a little bit more acidity and a little bit more balance. If it's coming out and it's looking good and it's tasting good, then it's good. If it sounds like a duck, quacks like a duck, you know, looks like a duck, it's probably a duck. So just let's let's move on from that. Easy, easy. We'll pour from this little cutesy one. Here we go. All right, not the best start. This, uh, Excuses. Yeah, the spout's crap. This is much better milk texture than I got on the two Panarella ones. This is the definition of silky milky. That is straight velvet. I really did like that steaming experience. It was very easy. It was very nice. It had good power. It was easier to steam on this than on the Bambino. See it? I recommend out of these, not the Smeg, essentially, because the Smeg is just an overpriced DeLonghi. It's uh, DeLonghi in the Emperor's clothes. It's it's a status symbol. If that's if you want to spend an extra 100, 120 bucks for that look, okay, do it. But you're just getting a DeLonghi in uh, wolf's clothing, okay? Now, the question is really between these two. If you are someone that likes to modify to grow with your machine, you could do the DeLonghi Dedica, but for, I don't think it's double the price, but maybe double the price, you have this one right here. And I know that's a big jump for a lot of people, so let's let's talk about it. So this one has 54 millimeter portafilter. It has a solenoid valve built in. It already has a Monon and so already you are pretty far along in your modifying journey with this one. This one, unless you want to go through and put a solenoid in, which is not an easy thing to do, this one you're going to be stuck with just a 51 millimeter group and no solenoid. This one you have the solenoid and the 54 group. You already have a steam wand here, but that's easily modifiable on this one. You have the, the pressure gauge here, you could easily put a pressure gauge on this one. So this one's already ready to take the dimmer modification, which is a $5 mod, takes you about 15 minutes to install, and you have flow profiling on this machine. This one you could do that, but you want to have a pressure gauge as well. So it, it's really a question of, you know, is it worth it up front to get this or do you want to grow with this? And then the other question comes in of uh, this one versus the Breville Bambino. Now I didn't cover the Bambino in this video because I've already done two videos, one on the stock version of Bambino and one on the Bambino Plus. My opinion is that Bambino is a better deal out of the box than this is only because it already is built in with a PID controller and it has an OPV. So not only are you getting consistent water temp coming out, but you have an OPV, so you don't have to worry about that fluctuation on the manometer. Of course, if you wanna do the dimmer mod, this one does have the added benefit of having the pressure gauge, which will help you in your profiles, but you can also add the pressure gauge on the Bambino, the, the base version. The Bambino Plus is a different price category, so we're not even talking about that. This one is a more robust feeling machine. It's much heavier than the Bambino, so I act like it's an easy decision. It's really not that easy. This one has a thermal block inside of it, whereas the Bambino has the Ferrojet in it. So the Bambino is a little faster on the heat up, but in reality, they're very similar. Uh, I would say that the Bambino has a little bit better temperature stability with their Ferro system and with their PID controller, but in reality, they're very similar machines, so it really comes down to user preference. 
reference. The Portafilter and Tamper is much higher quality coming with the Solus, but I believe this one does run about $80 more expensive. This is a solid starter machine. It does have a ceiling on it that you hit pretty quickly, but it is something that you can modify and you can keep for a long time. And it makes solid espresso. Again, I can't recommend, recommend enough Tom's Coffee Corner. And again, that's linked in the caption below. This one is a great starter machine. And it's also a great second machine. Granted, if you start with this, I wouldn't see this as much of an upgrade because you can kind of replicate a lot of this with this machine here, with the, the Longi Dedica. So instead I would look at maybe going a little higher and do something like, uh, you know, a Gaja Classic Pro would be a next step after the DeLonghi Dedica in my opinion. So anyway, I hope that this informs you. Uh, if you're watching this before the whole crazy Black Friday, Cyber Monday sales in 2023, I hope it helps you as I'm sure a lot of these will be going on sale. But anyway, Thanks as always for watching the channel. Thanks for watching the video. Give the thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button. Check out my Patreon because I'll be giving these away once I'm done modifying them after the following video. Thank you. It's been a lovely time. I hope that you have a great rest of your day. And brew something tasty. Cheers.